Okay, then let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Veni Sancti Spiritus, repletuorum corde fidelium et tui amoris in eis in emacende. Emile Spiritum tuum et crea buntu. Oremus Deus, qui corda fidelium, Sancti Spiritus, illustrazione da cuisti, da nobis in iodem spirito recta sapere, ed eius semper consolazione gaudere per Christum, Dominum nostrum. Amen. Okay, today the Gospel comes from St. Mark, chapter 6, verses 14 to 29. It's a long gospel and it relates the uh, martyrdom of St. John the Baptist. But um, you're familiar with that story. I'm not going to read, we're not going to read the whole uh, gospel account, uh, but just the first part and comment on that first part. So King Herod heard about Jesus for his fame had become widespread. And people were saying, John the Baptist had been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work at, uh, in him. Others were saying he is Elijah. Still others, he is a prophet, like any of the prophets. But when Herod learned of it, he said, It is John, whom I beheaded. He has been raised up. And then the story continues with the story of how John the Baptist was uh, martyred. Well, so it was quite fascinating, right? The other day, we were just commenting about how Jesus sent his disciples two by two, right? His apostles two by two to preach and to heal the sick. So maybe as a consequence of that, work of his apostles well his fame started spreading all over jerusalem uh, and, and neighboring towns that uh, even herod had heard of him okay so jesus has acquired some kind of a celebrity <coughs> status god bless you jesus acquired some kind of celebrity status back in the day when there was no internet when there was no social media uh it could have been quite a feat Right, it could have been quite a feat to uh, to uh, achieve such fame that Jesus uh, did or had. So he was like a uh, you know Hollywood celebrity all over all over the place. Um, and just like many of these Hollywood celebrities, the celebrity of Jesus was also wrapped in some kind of mystery. Right? Some kind of mystery that, you know, not everybody really understood him. Not everybody really knew uh, much about him. Uh, so a lot of uh, a lot of the information about Jesus was mainly hearsay, rumor. OK, or, or uh, <laughs> get Eva. Or some similar way of uh, of uh, knowing about Jesus, which was not really rooted and grounded on facts, on a personal intimacy, on friendship. Most of what people knew about Jesus then was an officious kind of knowing okay um a lot of it was mysterious and herod well fell for that kind of uh, uh, uh superficial knowledge so to speak about jesus and then quite understand you know how how he could really uh, make sense of this Jesus whose fame was circulating all over the place. And so the best he could make out of it was, you know, just to be able to justify his own uh, uh, um, 
own interpretation of things. He just said, oh yeah, you know, that must be John who I beheaded and has been raised up. So that's why he's now doing all of these miracles. So very shallow, very, in fact, impertinent and very uh, uh, non-factual uh, way of knowing Jesus or understanding Jesus. A lot of people mistook Jesus for somebody else, right? Elijah or, or John, right? In fact, uh, even Jesus himself asked his disciples uh, one day, uh, he asked them, who do people say that I am? And they gave this answer precisely. Some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah. And then he asked them, well, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And St. Peter gave not only the best answer, but the correct answer. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. That even among Jesus' disciples, not everybody really knew him intimately. Not all of them knew Jesus or got to know and understand who Jesus really was. Perhaps besides Peter. And maybe besides Peter, the other closest disciple and apostle would be John, who is depicted, especially in the Last Supper, to have leaned on Jesus' bosom. He was that intimate with Jesus, right? Like a child who is, who is uh, uh, by, by, by the, uh, a mother's breast. That is how close and intimate St. John was to Jesus. So we, we, you and I, uh, who are coming, who have come, uh, you know, many thousands of years uh, after Jesus' time, 20 centuries later, right? We cannot be like Herod. We cannot be modern day Herods who, uh, you know, do not really have a very clear grasp of Jesus. Because in fact, the fact that Jesus came to earth, he revealed the Godhead to us. He revealed God to us and he taught us how to deal with himself and with God the Father, calling God our own Father. Okay. So we who are who who are beneficiaries of revelation, beneficiaries of a long standing tradition in the Catholic Church, have plenty more to go by as far as knowing Jesus is concerned. And we all have to strive to get to know Jesus more intimately. Okay? We cannot we cannot uh, uh, remain at the level of superficiality. We cannot remain at the level of shallow, uh, uh, meaningless information about Jesus and his person and his mission. Yeah, we know, uh, we know that he is the Son of God. We know that he revealed himself as second person of blessed Trinity, that he is the Messiah, that he is our Savior. Eh? But you know what? There's more to it. He is also our brother. Eh? The firstborn of many, right? In the, in, in the family of God. We are all children of God. So Jesus to us is a brother. He is not just a distant God. He is a brother to us and a friend to us. See? And we have to get to know Jesus as a brother, as a friend. And it is best that we cultivate that personal relationship with Jesus. You know, we hear that term a lot, personal relationship with Jesus, right? That's what the Protestants want to say. 
Right? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, your Savior? Do you accept Him as your Savior? Well, of course we do, right? That concept came from the Catholics, not from the Protestants, right? But what kind of personal relationship do these Protestants claim to have with Jesus? I'm afraid to think it is merely officious, right? The official kind of relationship that they know he is their personal savior, but that's just about it. There's no real intimacy, no real knowledge of who Jesus is. And why is that? Because the Protestants deny many things that Jesus is. Okay? They deny many things about Jesus that we Catholics know and understand to be true. So we have the benefit of really knowing Jesus more intimately than anybody else does. And we have to strive to go deeper and deeper into our knowledge of Jesus Christ and really developing a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Based on knowledge, based on real intimate relationship, and not just based on an unofficious, emotional way of understanding Jesus and knowing Jesus. So the question is, well, how do we, how do we develop that knowledge and, and intimacy and friendship with Jesus Christ? I can give you about five tips here. Okay? Number one is we have to study about Jesus. We have to study about our faith. And we do that, right? Right here in our own family. We study the catechism every day. We study the Bible. We, we read and understand the message of Jesus Christ through all of these gospel commentaries we do every day. Okay? And, and we try to live up to the teachings of uh, uh, the church and the example of Jesus okay? in living our own lives. We model our own lives and our own virtues after the virtues of Jesus Christ that he had taught us to live by. Okay? So we study. Study is a very important way of knowing Jesus. In the same way that you, you study any figure of history and, what, and, and emulate certain personalities around you, you need to study about them if you really want to understand them. Second, we can learn about Jesus through the lives of the saints, through the writings of the saints, through the experiences of the saints about how to deal with Jesus. So spiritual reading is a very important way for us to grow in that intimacy and knowledge of Jesus Christ. A third way is through our own personal prayer. Okay? Especially those moments when we are praying right in front of the tabernacle. Or when we pray before uh, the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. There, in those very intimate, personal meetings with Jesus, we can pray and talk and converse with Jesus. Okay? Of course, we can pray everywhere and anywhere, even in the privacy of our own rooms, even out in the in in the backyard where we contemplate nature and and things like that. We we can pray anywhere we are. We can pray and get to know Jesus. A fourth recommendation is to look at the cross, to make it a habit to look at the crucifix where Jesus hangs. That picture, that image of Jesus hanging on the cross speaks to us volumes about who Jesus is and who Jesus is to us and what Jesus has done for us and how much Jesus loves us and how much Jesus has mercy for us. Okay? Jesus hanging on that cross is a very good way for us to know Jesus intimately. 
Okay? So look at that cross. Talk to Jesus on that cross. And that's the way Jesus communicates who he is for us. And a fifth way would be this. Ask Our Lady. Our Lady was his mother. Who better could introduce us to Jesus than Our Lady? Eh? Our Lady is one of the best conduits to Jesus. That we can learn more about Jesus through the tutoring of Our Lady. Eh? Our Lady can tutor us in how we should understand Jesus and get to know Jesus. And besides Our Lady, St. Joseph. Okay? St. Joseph. You look, we have that statue of St. Joseph. Okay? The figure of a father who is guiding his son, Jesus. Okay? Look at that intimate relationship that St. Joseph had with Jesus. We can learn from St. Joseph how to deal with Jesus, how to get to know Jesus better and better each day. Okay? So, Getting to know Jesus is one of the most important tasks we can ever embark on. And make Jesus your best friend. Okay? Nowadays we call it the BFF, best friend forever. Okay? So Jesus should be our BFF. Okay? And, and these five ways will help us get to know Jesus better and get to be very good friends with Jesus. So to summarize, first study, second read through spiritual reading and through the experience of the saints, third through our personal prayer, fourth by looking at Jesus on the cross, and fifth by asking Our Lady and Saint Joseph to introduce Jesus to us more intimately. Okay? That's it for us for today, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good weekend ahead of you. And we hope to see you again tomorrow. Huh? Yes, Eva, say bye-bye. Come, come, come. You don't want to say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Come, you show yourself here. Come, come. Let's say goodbye to everybody over here. <laughs> no, over here. Oh boy, she doesn't know where to go. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> I just knocked this thing off. Bye bye, everybody. Have a good weekend ahead of you. <laughs>